we take the app that we built yesterday, this one from, from here, and we package it into a Android app. So at the moment it, it's just a web page, but we see can we make it an app that you could upload to the App Store, for example. So I will try to, to teach you how this can be done. And um, since we are here, uh, I want to mention that it's not going to be the only way to do this, and maybe not the best way to do this. You can try to um, always Google some, some things, how to do this, how to do that. Uh, and also, I should mention about the programming. So, so far we have built uh, pure uh, HTML and pure JavaScript applications with this additional Google Map external library. But in practice, in companies, in, in, uh, in different places, people use uh, external frameworks, maybe libraries that, that, that uh, help them do some things a bit better. The code becomes a bit more modular. And um, it's also not something that I want to teach, because then you really learn too much and you lose what the main thing is about. So I try to keep everything as basic as possible. But uh, do uh, read about these new uh, JavaScript frameworks and, uh, and uh, libraries. I use jQuery a lot, but nowadays this uh, Angular framework is very, very popular for uh, web development. Okay, so let's see how can we package a website into an app. We begin by opening this uh, Android Studio. So you, you should install this, this on your uh, device first, on your computer. And then uh, let's begin by starting a new Android Studio project. And it's going to ask us for an application name. I'm going to write there this uh, super tracker that we built yesterday. And I'm going to call it also HTML5, maybe so that we can distinguish for what we are uh, going to do later in the native. And I'm just going to click Next here. And this is already one point that I really want to stress again. Target audience. So with this default setting, we are going to build for 39.3% of devices. So your target audience is not anymore everyone. It's already 39.3% of Android users. No more questions like, uh, is it a healthy application? Is it for weight loss? Is it for, for whatever? Even the people that can install will get um, <coughs> limited in this way. It's possible here to set uh, some newer, uh, newer setting, but this will limit the devices even more. It's uh, really limited to the best, to the newest models. And it's also possible to set very uh, early uh, APIs. Here it says 100% of devices. I'm not 100% sure about that 100%, but um, it's an estimate that, that they give. The problem with using a very old one is that you may not be able to access newer features of the operating systems. So. It's kind of a trade-off where, where to go. For today, I think I'm going to keep this marshmallow. It's uh, relatively old enough, and uh, I just stick to something. So let's continue. Now I have an option to select some activity. So the, basically what this means is, um, is that Android Studio is going to generate some code for me if I click any one of these ones. And you can see this very nice uh, Google Maps activity here. I'm not going to click that because what we are doing now is not building a Maps application. We are trying to package our website. So I'm, I'm going to start empty. But later, also today, we are going to build a Maps application. So I'm going to choose that one. Now, empty application, um, some default names there. I'm just going to stick with them. I think main activity is, is good enough because it's uh, it's just going to do one thing. It's going to be this 
a browser. We are going to implement a browser that can open our web page in an app. I'm just going to click finish here and wait for this Android Studio to set up the project. <coughs> you can see here it's still doing something. Might be a good moment to mention that uh, I'm not an Android developer, uh, so I, I don't know everything about it, but I know enough to <coughs> do something like what I teach you today. Also, take it with a grain of salt that I might not know the best way to do the things, and uh, <coughs> possible somebody here may, may teach me some, some things, it's not out of the question, but uh, let's see how it goes. So what happened here? There is some code written, some uncreate function here. Also, is it possible to make this font size bigger? Does anybody know how to make uh, the font size bigger here? <coughs> in settings. Maybe if some of you have time to Google how to do it, then you can tell me a little later. But um, let's check also this activity name. Also some text here. This is XML. So already you see a similarity between the web app and this uh, this is a native app, what we are building here. The similarity is two languages. So in the web we have HTML and JavaScript. Here it seems we have XML and Java. So a little bit of a, of a similarity. This XML is going to be again for the interface. Here it seems to build a text view <coughs> object. Put a hello world string into it. And very nice feature here, I can press this design uh, button and it's going to show me how, it's, how it looks like on the, on the right side. Okay. Now, a little bit more about this, uh, this structure here. There are some resources. So this activity main is actually in this layout resource. So it's going to define our, our uh, layout. The Java files are here, and at the moment we have this main activity uh, only. This is some sample sample code here. I don't think it's, it's worth to discuss about that at the moment. And also this manifest. This is something that uh, tells us properties of the of the project. Has anybody found out how to zoom in? Yeah, uh, like to increase the font, you can yeah, file in settings. File. Settings. Uh, uh, this one. Uh, Editor. Then, uh, yeah. And then color and fonts. And you have to um, click on the arrow. Yeah. Right. Thanks. Well, this is a bit better, I think. So, in this manifest, you have general properties of the, of the app. There are some things that are automatically written here, like the label of the app, this name. Uh, there are some icons here, so the app has an icon usually. Um, and this is where we are going to write the first things today. So, what we want to add to these different uh, different properties is uh, two additional properties. They are going to give our app access to the internet and they are going to give our app access to fine location. And this fine location um, is one of two options. It's also possible uh, to access this coarse location which means not so uh, precise. Location. So depending on what app, uh, app you're going to build, 
uh, you might need very precise location or not so precise location, but for the tracking as precise as possible is, is uh, welcome. So I'm going to add that there into our, into our manifest. I'm going to save and I don't think we need to worry about that anymore. But this view here, so it's something I, I don't I don't need. I don't want my app to say hello world. I want my app to display a browser. So I'm going to just delete delete this this. And um, good to mention is that um, you can always also construct the interface from this place here. So from this design view, um, you can see a lot of different uh, buttons, text options, layouts. What we are going to use now is this web view container. So I'm going to drag it here and uh, almost like, like magic it, uh, it knows what to do. It places it there and if I move back now to the text uh, I see that it indeed created some some uh, properties <coughs> I don't necessarily need this uh, border again, so it's something that uh, it seems uh, seems to happen very often. And I want it really to stretch as much as possible. So I'm going to write here that I want to match the parent. So parent means uh, the full container of the application. I want the width and the height to be as, as big as possible. So if I go back to the design, I see now that these borders are, uh, have disappeared. Um, maybe we want to add also a name, uh, an ID for this. So I'm just going, I'm switching now from this design to text view to, to show you that it's possible to do it um, in both ways basically. So let's just call it web view here. And now my text contains a text here that uh, an update here with the ID of the object. Okay, so this is basically yes. Excuse me. What for you uh, make the web view? I will make it. So we have built yesterday a web application, uh, HTML5 application. I'm going to load it into uh, an Android browser uh, in an Android app. So I'm going to build a very simple Android app that can load any HTML page. Okay. Yes. So, this is... Uh, right. This is now the web view, so our layout is done. It will look like this. And let's see how we can populate it. So we want now to put some code here. Uh, and this code should tell us uh, what is going to happen. So I want this web view to become, um, how to say, to, to contain our, our web page. This onCreate function is, uh, is like a main function in, uh, in Android. So it's the first thing that is going to start now from this main activity. And um, this is where I'm going to write some code. Um, I think I'm going to try to today do a little bit more scripted version of this of this coding because uh, yesterday I think I started to bore some people. Um, okay, so first of all, you might not give permission to your app to access this, this location information. So we are going to request the permission. This is going to be a question when you start your app. If you want it to um, use the location, then you will press allow. If not, then you will, you will not press that. And you notice here that the interface is showing in red something. And this means that it's an error. The error is caused uh, in this case by not importing the proper class. So in Android Studio, if you press Alt and Enter, or if you uh, also, it's possible if you check, um, okay, sometimes there is some this warning, warning button here, it's going to guide you, it's going to tell you what to do. 
and basically one class here in the imports is, is missing so I'm going to let it add it for me it's going to give me this activity compat and the manifest has to also be included so the one we defined before I, I want to get from there this property okay um, so we will request permissions and then we have to work with the, with the web view so how do we access something that we defined in the interface looks like that first of all again this web view needs to be imported and this find view by ID is very similar to this document get element by ID that you have seen in, in the JavaScript so far it basically means that get the thing with this ID from the layout that we defined before and now we can refer to it by this my web view uh, value now this is uh, okay no no problem uh, and how about uh, how do we load the URL so for example um, my web view load URL so here we're going to give a URL of the application and let's use our application from yesterday so this is the URL that I'm going to give it and I'm going to just paste it here and semicolon is missing at the end so I want to see what happens if I if I do this and I'm going to try to, to debug the app now to debug from this run uh, you go to this debug option and here you probably will not have a virtual device installed so this button here you will need to press it and you will need to select some some device from there and maybe add some settings like how much memory you want it to use and so on but um, I already created this beforehand and I'm going to attempt to start it now so I want to debug the application in the Android emulator it's also possible to debug on your own device so if you connect your, your um, phone to the computer it's going to appear there um, you might need to give it some uh, permission so it's possible that um, you need to give it some uh, permission for developer uh, to, to view this, this device otherwise you, you won't see anything now it takes some time for this uh, emulator to begin but um, after it starts, after it initializes then next time we will compile it will be a bit faster so it's, it's only slower at, uh, at the beginning after you load it once then we will just keep it and recompile it just uh, uh, access it already loaded there so it's going to be a bit, a bit quicker than before and uh, yeah any questions so far? Okay, that is coming that application which are going to the uh, or makes the browser facilities to uh, start the uh, browser application. Yes, exactly. And you can use it for any application. So if you have a web page that you want to turn into an Android app, you can just change the link to, to any web page. You can put here any address. So now we are using our own application as, a, as an example okay so something happened here it's asking me to access the device location I'm going to give allow but we see that it doesn't work and the reason why it doesn't work is because this web view um, um, object that we create here is the most basic web view that can exist it doesn't have JavaScript enabled for example um, or cookies or, or any other uh, any other things that we have used before so we will need to enable that but you see that it works it does load our page this start call stop save delete left right uh, the buttons 
are the same ones that we have here on the web page that we implemented yesterday uh, and you can access them from the different uh, uh, different uh, um, screens here but because JavaScript doesn't work it's just going to put everything in one screen and, uh, and uh, look like this so now we go back to, to our code and I'm going to um, just paste here something again quite a lot of text but um, bear with me for, for a while I also will need a separate class Okay, and I'm just going to press this alt enter to import all these things that are that are missing here and then we can discuss about what we have done okay so here this web settings they are used for these uh, different properties like enable the JavaScript uh, enable the geolocation from the web page this is uh, this is things that are that need to be done for our our specific app to work and here I have in implemented a class um, that basically extends the Chrome browser so any functionalities that the Chrome browser has become included into our uh, web view so I just wanted our web view to be more powerful to support these uh, maybe different CSS uh, uh, attributes and it will support them as good as Chrome is going to support them now um, it is also going to um, allow Chrome to uh, get the permission for the geolocation so uh, this callback here is going to be called if the if the app needs needs permission for the geolocation so right now I'm going to try to debug this again and we are kind of done so if this one works then the package is almost almost complete okay so now those buttons disappeared Superman is on the map it looks the same as, as it does in Chrome here uh, almost I would say almost exactly the same but now we have an app so uh, we could I will do something what I did uh, yesterday maybe um, I wonder where this is. Okay, I'm not sure where this is anymore, but um, yeah. Okay, bear with me a little bit. So I'm gonna open Mopsy. and I'm going to search for one trajectory so for one, one route maybe, maybe something like that I'm going to open its properties and from here I want to download the points in GPX format so Mopsy has this possibility to download uh, a route in, in GPX format and it's downloaded in this EMP direct, uh, directory and my desktop so now from the emulator I'm going to load this route from the desktop and now the points are here so when I press the play button the Superman guy is going to move exactly as this uh, as that route uh, loaded from from uh, Mopsy is is showing how to do and here I have done yesterday a small off-screen uh, improvement that I made the Superman rotate uh, as he is moving so he is not going backwards anymore uh, I'm not going to focus on how I did that but um, there is this in JavaScript now uh, I made a get rotated icon 
and depending on the direction I'm going to choose a different picture to put to the icon. It's not going to be very, very uh, smooth, but it looks a little better than, uh, than before. So now I can start to, to, okay, here I was waiting for some <laughs> friends to meet me before we start skiing, so that's why Superman is not moving. <laughs> So the, the trajectory is moving, but the location is not changing. So uh, I was stopped for a, for a little bit. And I have to wait. Okay, so it seems my friends are there now. So now you can see it's tracking. The, the route is, is uh, happening behind. I'm going to stop. I'm going to save this, this trajectory. I'm going to start again to record. Uh, it's going to, to move again, uh, record another trajectory, I'm going to stop it, save it again, and if I go to the collection now, I should see two elements in my collection, the first trajectory and the second trajectory. So now with this small bug that, uh, that uh, Google Maps is not able to... to show the trajectory sometimes and yeah, it's no problem here. But anyway, so Yarmo, this is what we did yesterday. Wow, uh, is this a, a TBX um, format, standard format? Yes, too? there are two standard formats, this GPX format and this KML formats. So both of them are quite standard formats. You will uh, be able to export this from Sports Tracker or uh, Strava or, or, or any of these sports uh, sports tracking applications. Okay, now. Yeah, I'm sorry, uh, is this saving uh, with this uh, GPX format of the trajectory? I will show you how it looks like. So it is an XML file. Okay. It's a very simple file, XML file, where each track point, I, I believe, has a latitude, a longitude, and a timestamp component. So location and time for each, uh, each of these points, and you can see it's quite big because the trajectory is, is quite long. And your applications use the GPX to save the trajectory, but you save it on record? Save it, or uh, saving it is done somehow differently, but transfer is done usually in this GPX format. Like if I want to download from Sports Tracker, import it to Mopsy or the other way around, uh, you use this format. Okay, but now one thing still remains. We are loading here a web page. I want my web page to be included into the app. So this is something that I still want to show you. It will not make a big difference for our app because the only thing that we really load from our local environment will be the Superman picture. If you check the map, the map is always going to be uh, loaded from the internet. When, when you pan like this, you see the new tiles appearing on, on the side. So it still will have internet needs. But if you make an application, a web page, that loads a photo gallery, for example. And if you include all the photos, maybe a, I don't know, gigabyte of photos there, um, if you package it in your app, then you won't need internet access. You have everything there ready. And this goes for browser games also. <coughs> if you don't want your game to have a loading bar where you download from some server or the pictures, just put all of them there. So this is. I don't necessarily have to show you, but I want to show you that this is this is possible. And I have to remember how to do this. Uh, you make a new folder into the app, and it's going to be this assets folder. So with this assets folder, I'm just going to leave it in the default location, pressing finish here. And I'm going to right click and show in Explorer to see where, where it is. So it's going to find me the, the location on the hard disk where this assets folder is. And it's empty. 
Now, prior to the lecture, I downloaded something somewhere. I downloaded all the code from our super tracker, so the one that is online. Uh, you can see it's all there, like the images, uh, the JavaScript uh, that we wrote, including this super marker now that is able to, to rotate. So this is the new, new thing that you don't know, but all the other ones are there. I'm not going to stress on this uh, rotating because it's just an additional feature. It's something that if you want, you can learn it now. So I'm going to take it, I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to paste it in our assets folder. So that's it. And uh, now the only difference that I'm still going to do is I'm going to go back to the source code. And here, instead of loading an external, uh, an external link, I'm going to load file from the assets which is index.html so now it's not loading anymore our web page it's going to load our assets file which you can already see it's here in the, in the interface so after I copied it it appeared here so I'm going to run and debug the new app oh yes we will do one more thing Okay, it looks the same. It's not really any 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 different. The maps are still going to load from from Google Maps, so by internet. But now, this small icon loaded instantly from from, from this this place here. So that's almost it. What I still want to do is show you how to change the icon, because if we look at our app, it has now this super tracker super boring icon and uh, yesterday during the break I uh, exercised my my drawing skills and uh, I'm not sure if you saw it because it was a break but uh, this is our new icon so yeah uh, how do we put this one there um, we go back to the source code and and and, and. Mm. sorry I think it was here I think, yeah, I could go to manifest, but then I would have to load it, uh, just change somehow the code. There is also some way to do it um, that makes a different icon for different uh, apps. So there is um, some a bit better way to do it, but I don't remember anymore. Um, what about resources and the uh, code? Icons. Oh, it seems like uh, yeah, there are there are some background, um, um, but this is XML defining some um, I think some SVG format or some. It looks here like a vector format for the image. So um, I don't want to convert it to to this <coughs> this format. I'm just going to Google it. So. Um, Let's see. Oh, wow, even a video. So really, there are a lot of, uh, of resources. If you want to know how to do something, then, uh, then you should be able to, to find them, uh, to find how to do something if you, if you want to do something. Mm, OK, there are some ways to go here, but OK. 
okay, possible to make this um, file new image asset. So this is what I was talking about, that you might want to make a smaller or a bigger icon for uh, various, various devices. But I, I will, yeah. Okay, so let's try to do that. So file new image asset. Um, yeah, I remembered now. So you can uh, go also from here, new image asset. So it's probably going to open the same, and it's this screen. So this is what I wanted to show you. Um, I'm going to choose a image from our system. I think it was in a desktop somewhere. No, it was not. It was, um, yeah, sorry for this. I didn't think that setting the icon requires uh, scripting, uh, <laughs> preparing ahead of time. But uh, yeah, it's this one. Okay. So this is what I mean. It automatically helps you to, to generate different icons for different sizes. And uh, here you have also some properties that maybe you want to resize it a little bit. So I would like to resize it a little bit uh, and this is something I would just not be able to do by uploading the uh, PNG directly so um, yeah okay I'm just gonna leave it this way press next and I think just finish I don't need the uh, background to look any different but uh, there are a bit more more properties there I think so now I'm going to try to run and debug the app one last time and hopefully this icon will change from there to our new one and then it's ready. I'm going to save the APK which is the uh, installation file for this, for this app and I'm going to put it also on our uh, web page so you can install it from there. Uh, I close it Okay, so now the icon is also changed here. And now we try our skills at making uh, making a native app. So uh, this was not the native app what we did before. It was partially native because we made the browser, but it really all the functionality of the app came from the web website. So now we build everything inside this app, inside Android, nothing from the web page. And we will see um, how it goes. So I plan to um, go a bit more scripted. So I'm going to input some, some code uh, more frequently because it, I, I tried to prepare it very similar to the code that we did yesterday. So I kept the same variable names, I kept the same kind of uh, functions that we implemented yesterday in, in HTML. So um, I'm just going to copy some parts of code and then we can discuss about them, what are they, how are they different and, uh, and so on. And I might not finish today, so I just want to take the time that you really understand this and you can interrupt and, uh, and uh, ask if something is unclear. So now we build a new project. I'm going to call it uh, the Super Tracker Native. Same as before, I press next. I'm not going to modify this, this uh, version here. It might mean that if you have an older device, this will not work. But uh, I think this is already quite quite popular nowadays. And um, as I mentioned before, we will start with uh, Google Maps activity this time. Uh, so activity name is going to be the same, but the title for our uh, app, uh, I want it to be this uh, super tracker there. So not map, map is too, too generic. Okay, and I'm going to click finish here. 
and now again this uh, this Android Studio is going to to build things for me and it's going to build more things for me than before and it's also going to tell me many things like uh, before you run your application you need a Google Maps API key follow the link below and get the key and after you get the key that starts with that in case you don't know how a Google Map key looks like replace that with your key so uh, this Android Studio is Android which belongs to Google uh, very much uh, pushing towards Google services here so teaching you a lot of a lot of things and uh, wanting you to, to develop for it um, yeah so I'm not gonna teach you how to get the key anymore uh, we have already done that before but and also many instructions here if you want to redo it and I'm going to run and debug the app to see what is this generating for me and what it will generate is uh, I think it's going to be an error <laughs> um, having to do with my emulator uh, device properties but let's see how, how that goes so now it is still still debugging it shouldn't uh, generate any error it should work immediately but um, some you will see Is the time when I should enter some music background <laughs> and, uh, under video format. <laughs> okay, so this thing won't run unless you update Google Play services. So this is the one error that appears here. Um, I don't want to update this Google Play services because I have some other testing apps at the moment that would uh, break so I, I don't want to do that uh, so what I am going to do is I'm going to go here and um, tell this um, this file here my version of the Google Play services which is 11.01 .01. this is something that you don't have to do uh, in general and uh, you could just press this update button uh, so anyway you can also google this kind of uh, this kind of thing if it happens but now if I debug the app it should uh, it should work normally so something that uh, prevented me from demonstrating smoothly what is happening here I will not compile so much today <laughs> because this is uh, taking too much too much time I think but it's important to see what is uh, what comes automatically from from Google Maps here I think I need. Uh, I think this app is still waiting for for something there, so I should have closed it. Maybe let's let's try again. Okay, so now now after it installed it, it's a bit faster, so no no more problems. Okay, yeah. So uh, maps are working. Um, as 
has on the internet, I would say, in the browser, maybe a little bit different, a bit smoother panning, panning experience. And it's possible to zoom, to simulate two finger uh, pinch gesture and also this uh, rotating. So it's a bit more, more features that you get on the, on the browser. And you will also notice some other differences. Um, map is cleaner. By cleaner, I mean if we open our um, our browser app here, map, satellite, full screen button, street view button, plus, minus, all of these could be removed in the website if I want. Uh, there are options for those. I maybe maybe teach you later, but by default they are not on here, and the reason is I don't know. Uh, but the reason I suspect is uh, they are not very useful. So if you start Street View from here, it's not going to look very nice. Street View is aimed at bigger screens. It's aimed at somewhere where you can uh, really understand the location around you. And on an iPhone, on a phone, on a mobile phone, it's a too large feature for, for it. So that's what they why they removed. Uh, the full screen is not necessary because it's already full screen and the map and satellite um, they just I don't know they don't have it there they also have some additional features like if I click this marker I'm going to get options how to navigate to that to that uh, marker which is something by uh, that they do by default here in Google Maps so there are some differences and apparently this compass uh, here uh, is going to reposition my map towards north. Now, let's see what code has been added here. So first, it opened me this uh, XML file. I added the key. I'm not going to need to look at this again. The maps activity class, so this is a Java class. It is here, the only, only class, has again as before an uncreate uh, function. It's instantiating this, this page, but then it's also doing something more. It's getting the map uh, from Google, and when it's ready, it's going to uh, have a callback, this on map ready callback. So this is another function which is here. So when the map is ready, uh, it will instantiate this M map which I don't like. I usually name, it's not really a global variable, but uh, because it's also the main activity here, I consider it a global variable. I'm going to name it as we did before, GMAP, but now I'm using the Java naming conventions. So Java naming conventions, variable names start with the lower capital. Any other word part of your, your variable, like map here, starts with a capital letter. Uh, class variables start with a uh, capital letter, so class names, like this Google Maps or Map Activity. So small differences in notations, but it's very good to follow the Java naming practices if you're developing in Java and, and so on. So I refactored, so this GMAP has, has changed everywhere. And it's putting a marker in Sydney, what we have seen before, and moving the camera. So a little bit different functions than before. Uh, if you remember in JavaScript, we have something like uh, um, we had a marker, like uh, something like that. And then we had a GMAP. No, uh, map, gmap, something like that. But now, from the map, we add the marker. So a little bit different, different things. And before we had something like to move the map to a specific location. Here we move the camera. So to to this location. So it's not the same. If you know how to develop in Google Maps, 
in JavaScript, it will take a while to get used to the to the Android API. And if I go here to the um, reference, so Google Maps API reference Android is going to have the different the different uh, functions for the Android API. And if you type JavaScript. It's going to have a different web page with those those functions there. So it's something that you should look out for uh, when you search for examples or, or uh, things like this online. Okay, but let's begin and try to to implement something uh, that you are a bit familiar with. So from before, I'm going to paste here some some code from yesterday. I'm going to paste a G marker and a G polyline. So the marker will be, um, and I'm going to import these classes while I speak. So the marker will be the Superman marker, and the polyline is going to be the red root that is going to be uh, under him there. And let's modify a little bit this unmap ready uh, function. I'm also going to to copy here some code. So I'm going to do this. Yes. So the default location, I changed it to somewhere in Finland. Um, it is really the same code from yesterday. So um, moving the map to the, to the default location. Um, and now the marker options. So this position, I move the marker. Um, I move the marker options to the uh, default location, and I'm giving it an icon. And this icon we have to do now. So this bitmap descriptor factory tells that I want to go in my resources and load some file from there. This soup stands for the Superman file. Um, not existing yet. I will show you how to add it soon. <coughs> and then I make the marker with these two options and the polyline, which will be empty at the moment, but it will have a width of five and color of red. So when we start to track, we already see the, the, the different properties are, are here. The path is just not, not existing at the moment. And yeah. That's it. I think I have an error here. This uh, not error, but uh, I don't need to move the camera two times. Uh, I think I can remove this line from here. Sorry for that. Okay, but here icon. So my icon. For some reason, I put it in some director directory called raw. So I'm going to make a new directory in the resources. You can call this anything, but uh, raw image files go there. And I'm going to open the directory in Explorer. And I'm going to put. Um, yeah, I'm going to put this image of Superman from the top this time. So um, I'm going to copy it and I put it here in the raw raw directory. So going back to Android Studio, it already shows it there and it doesn't show as an error here anymore. Uh, and now I'm going to try to debug to see if this app is uh, still working. So nothing too different, a different location. We prepared our uh, marker and polyline objects that we, we um, changed the icon of the marker and this polyline is going to be, it's prepared to have a line there, but it is not uh, having anything at the moment. Oh, 
Okay, so it is somewhere in, in Finland, but um, apparently he is swimming or floating there. Right, so a little bit a bit different than before. Let's let's proceed. Let's go on. So this is again. I forgot. Sorry, Jarmo, but uh, it seems like you you um, would understand this a bit better if if you were yesterday. Um, so some of the variables that I'm going to paste here now are going to be very. Uh, very similar to the ones yesterday, so, yeah. I'm going to put a root object. So, a list, this will be a list of locations of latitude longitude points. And a collection object, this will keep the roots that are in the memory. So, uh, as before, the same names. And uh, the collection index, which originally is uh, initially is zero, and it will start to uh, it will increase depending on which route you are looking at. And now we are defining also this screen screen type enumeration. So if you remember, our our application has a main screen, a tracking screen, a publishing screen, and a collection screen. So I define these properties here, and I set the default screen to be the main screen. The beginning. So these are something that look almost identical to to the JavaScript version. Now, um, what needs to be done here in the create function is to check if your app has permissions to use the location. If it has permissions to use the location, then everything is going to be fine. But if it doesn't have permissions, you should point that out to the user. So you should tell the user, uh, do you want to uh, allow this app to access the location? So I'm going to also copy this here to go a bit faster. So checking now the permission and the permission again is the same this uh, from the manifest for the act to access the fine location and if it is not a grant it is, if it is not granted already then you will request this permission to the user so this is going to be asked at the beginning of the app if you don't have permission then uh, it will ask that uh, else then this is going to be everything Okay, so that that is no problem. No problem is there. But how do we get now location? So we want to get our location as it updates. I'm going to create a class for that. I'm going to call it the location handler. The location handler class. And this is going to be a service. So it's going to extend the service class which is default class in, in Android and it's also going to implement the location listener interface so you might be a bit confused with the, these things but um, if you are familiar with Java you should remember that you extend the class but you implement the interface or uh, sometimes uh, uh, abstract classes can can also be like that, but um, anyway. Um, and now it seems to be an error here. So the error comes because when you extend these these uh, classes, you must uh, implement the functions that are associated with those classes, or overwrite them, basically. So if you press this this button again, it's going to tell you to implement these methods. And if you click that, it's going to automatically implement these uh, these different methods that are required here. And if you go down, because of because we are implementing this interface, this location listener interface, we are automatically generated uh, on location changed function here. Uh, so this is going to be triggered every time your mobile location is 
is modifying itself. So this is going to be very important for us. But what we want to do in that function is modify the location of the marker from the main screen. So because that, I'm going to write here a constructor Okay, and I'm going to define a private uh, variable. I'm going to call it also owner, maybe. So I want a reference in this class of, of the maps activity. So I want to have a reference to this class where I have these different objects like the marker and polyline so that I can modify their location. It will become a bit clearer to you to you later on, but um, anyway, this is the only way I, I thought is um, more similar, uh, makes it more similar to JavaScript in, in, some, in some situation. And now, in this on location changed, we want to use the location and update the properties of the existing objects. So I'm also going to copy something here. <coughs> First of all, this location is the parameter, but the map works with these LAT LNG objects. So I'm going to need to import this class here and convert the given location parameter um, to this LAT LNG here, otherwise I, I can't uh, operate with the map. My root object is going to add this new, uh, this new um, item into the, into the list and uh, the polyline is going to get the root and it's going to be visible if we are on the tracking page. So this is only going to happen on the tracking page. And if we are not on the collection page, if you remember, on the collection page, we didn't want to move the map with Superman. We wanted to see the roots uh, by themselves there. And in that case, we want to, uh, if we are not on that page, we don't want to move, move the camera. So this, yeah. So apart from that, we also move the camera so it follows the user's location. And the marker becomes this location. So, uh, not too complicated things what are happening here. One error is happening with this Google map because it has a private uh, attribute here by default. It cannot be accessed from the outside class. So, I'm going to make this to public and going back here it should, it should work okay now. Right, so this is what happens when the location is, is changed, but um, there is one more problem that I, I try to avoid a little bit. Um, you might have permission for the app to access the location, but your location might be disabled in the phone. many things in Android that you have to consider. So it's possible that your phone has just the location off, but the app has permission. So then it will, will cause some, some error if, uh, if we don't handle that. I'm not going to discuss about it too much. I'm just going to paste, uh, paste again the function here to get the location. And we will look through it uh, uh, one by one. Um, first of all, to uh, be able to get it, we need this location manager object. So I'm going to define uh, a location manager object somewhere here. Uh, like that. And I need to include the class. And what do I do here? is I check to see if the GPS and if the network are enabled. So if any of, the G of these two options are enabled, then I will be able to retrieve the location. But if not, I won't be able to, to retrieve the location. So 
I need a variable for this. Let's see if, if this uh, if this can can uh, help me out. Yeah, so it, it defines me this variable. This one here too. Uh, so if it is possible to to access them from the phone, from the operating system, uh, then my location will become something. So location, I need another uh, another variable for that. It's going to be this uh, location uh, type, a private type. call it location here and um, we will try to request the location from the GPS provider every second so this is the minimum time that we try to request and minimum distance value here means that we request it even if the user is not moving if you put here a minimum distance of 10 meters for example it will not request a new location unless the user is moving 10 meters. Now you might ask, how do you find out if the user is moving? <laughs> if you're not asking the location, uh, it is because of the accelerometer. So accelerometer uh, is able to detect chain relative changes in, in movement and it figures out if the phone has uh, moved a certain distance without the use of GPS. And this is done much more efficiently than using the GPS sensor. So it's possible to, it's kind of a black box. I don't know exactly how it works, but it uses these, uh, these different sensors to make it more efficient to use the, the system. But for tracking, you really want it as frequent as possible. And the same thing here is happening for the network. So if it fails to get location from GPS, it will try to get location from the network with the same same parameters there and that's it um, you might have here a, a small problem you see these red lines they look like errors but really they are not so it means here that the call requires permission which may be rejected by user but in the main activity we already checked for permission so it shouldn't reach that it shouldn't treat this as an error. It just uh, the display, the layout only emphasizes this. Uh, this it might be a problem, but we are handling it on the previous, on the previous page. Okay, this can be a bit confusing, but uh, don't worry about it. I think you, uh, if you look at it again, it's probably going to be a bit more, uh, a bit more understandable later. So. Uh, going back to our maps activity, if we have permission, we have to still check if these things are enabled. So I'm going to, with permissions, paste something here. I'm going to need an object, this G location handler, which I'm going to define on the top. And this is going to be what we implemented now. So this location handler class so this object this G location handler I instantiated and the constructor so the one that we wrote here before on the top is going to get a parameter this maps activity so the main main class from here I'm going to give it this so it's going to take this object and it's going to be able to interact with the maps activity and all of its objects like the like these uh, maps marker polyline through this um, owner parameter that we are now keeping inside this owner uh, variable here so now it should be a bit clearer to you why I'm using owner everywhere here because all these objects are going to be coming from this main page okay and here I'm checking if the location is null it means so the location handler location if it is null it means that uh, this location from here has not been 
uh, enabled by the by the device. So otherwise, it becomes something here. It becomes the last known location of the of the device. So here we can we can figure out if you have indeed uh, gotten the location. So. or if we need to show a settings alert. Uh, this is a small problem here because of the private access, so I forgot to put this as a public location. And uh, I will need one more thing, and after that we are almost, almost done with this, uh, with this part, to show the settings alert. So this settings alert is going to be a function that tells you, I'm going to add here, let's, let's just paste it also and look at it. So this show settings alert, uh, it's going to be an alert dialog. So this, this means that it's going to come over the app and it's going to tell you that, hey, your location is off in your settings. Do you want to open the settings and change the location settings? So basically, um, I don't know if I can show this in emulator, but uh, uh, somewhere here there, there should be the, I, I don't know if emulator has it, but there should be the location button here. So this is what, uh, what this piece of code here is going to do. Uh, and all of these functions need to be, uh, classes need to be imported also. So they are some things that must be done when you are developing for Android, even though it doesn't necessarily uh, affect your app functionality very much. Okay, so that's something now. And I think it's already um, capable of, of debugging, so let's see. Um, going to debug the app and wait for it to, to come up. Hopefully no errors. Okay, so requests this permission for, for accessing the location. Um, and now <coughs> let's try to put this emulator back on and doesn't seem to work. Okay, it's possible. Um, uh, all right, so it checked the permission, it requested the location, uh, it showed the uh, um, alert, but in the success, okay, it got into this if statement, it requested permission, but it never got into this else, else part. So uh, it never got into this else part, so it never could instantiate the location uh, at all. So it, it never did, did this thing. But if I'm going to debug the app again, uh, I think it's going to uh, remember the setting for this, for this location from previously. Okay. Yes. Emulator has this tool. So okay. emulator has this dot 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 here, and there is a tool among many others on the right, this location tool that uh, I have loaded the, the coordinates, okay. or or you can send it some coordinates from from here. So this is uh, also possible. Um, <coughs> 
I'm going to try to debug again because I think my emulator might might have some problem. I, I don't think it's necessary problem with the app, but maybe some of the settings here. So, okay, I want to go. Why is location handler not enabled? Location is on. So, what's the problem? Um, I'm going to try to close the emulator and, and restart it. Sometimes it could be as easy as that. But um, if you notice something wrong wrong with uh, with this, then... Uh, okay, yeah, I think it's something wrong with it because now it kind of crashed a, a little bit. If you notice something maybe wrong that I did, you can let me know. In the block cat, there is a lot of red ones. Uh huh. Could be pretty easy. Yes, it's a good idea. Let's uh, try to compile again and get a new log. I'm going to uh, delete what we have here in this. Uh, it doesn't want to delete, <laughs> it wants the error to be seen. I don't think they are related. Uh, usually, the classes that are related to ours appear here in blue, in blue color. So this is more like an operating system um, uh, issue. So this logcat can have. Um, yeah, something is really wrong here. Uh, yeah, so this uh, lo logcat can uh, can have errors from everything, from uh, operating system and from the app. So it's not necessarily uh, related to us. But um, I think the on only thing we can do is just debug. So I'm going to, to put some breakpoints here and see in which part of uh, this it's going to go. Uh, I'm also going to, to check this location once more, so this location value from here is here, so if there is indeed the last known location, it's going to become something, okay, I remember, uh, I realize what is wrong, um, yeah, so the problem is uh, we are not calling the get location function anywhere, so we, we are not calling this function anywhere. <laughs> I defined it but forgot to call it, so my, my mistake. It should be called here um, as soon as you have the, the constructor. So after this object is, is defined, let's see if we can get the location. So the location was off always, even if permission existed. Uh, so here, this was always always null, no matter anything else. I'm going to remove the breakpoints, and I'm going to debug the app again. Yeah, sometimes these things are uh, hard to keep track of when when uh, implementing. But uh, if you take your time, and if you would have started to debug, oh, okay. Now we get error. So now it stopped working. It crashed. So now we can look at at these uh, at these debug uh, outputs and see if there is something that we can do about. So seems to be an exception here in location handler. Uh huh. Um, right. So I'm trying to add um, a coordinate into the root, but. Um, my root object from here has never been has never been instantiated, so uh, uh, it's going to give this uh, null pointer probably. Wait, let's see. 
yes, uh, null, null object reference for the root object. So, um, yeah, so I need to define this object somewhere. I'm going to put it in the, um, here in the onCreate function. So, assuming everything goes, goes smoothly and, and location is on, Now, this is needed there. Notice that the root object is a list, but uh, the list object is, uh, is, cannot be instantiated. So it's, it's like, I don't know if it's an abstract class or, a, or an interface. Uh, it needs to be instantiated with a concrete class. So now I'm using this array list here to, to define it. I'm going to try again. Oh, okay, some, something is different. <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to try to zoom out a little bit to see what is happening here. So there is Superman and he is moving and he is indeed following some route here. So this simulation five times my speed of uh, cycling, I think. So it's, as you can see, I don't ski, no, it's skiing. I don't ski very fast uh, if this is five, five times my, <laughs> my speed. But it seems to work. So. We got now to this point where we have the location and the location is updating and it's updating the, the marker on the map. And probably we are going to stop here because, um, because the, the next part is, is going to not be more difficult but going to be a new thing completely. So we start to add what we will do next time. Uh, we will start to add these functionalities, like how to start, how to view the collection, uh, how to stop the tracking for the, for the user. And maybe we do one more thing. So before we, we stop, we do one more thing because we still have time and um, I don't want to do this later on. I want to show you that um, it is not too difficult to make Superman rotate uh, so that he is going in the direction of the of the of the movement so let's go back here to to the main main functions and i'm going to write a new class i'm going to call it super marker so empty class and i'm going to paste some functions in here so these functions are um, very similar to the ones that I have done yesterday after class. So if you remember this super marker uh, file that I, that I said that I did at home with this get rotated icon and then getting the icons uh, which picture to use, which rotated version of Superman to use depending on the movement uh, I have some trigonometry uh, functions here, but uh, not too complicated. So how to get the angle from the old position to the new position is, is everything that is done here. And if we move to Java, my get rotation function is much simpler. So this is because in Android, I can rotate the marker with the function. I don't need to do this, uh, this difficult uh, multiple pictures and then change the, the picture depending on the, rota the rotation. I can just keep one, one icon, in this case uh, this one here, and I can programmatically rotate it uh, as opposed to, to JavaScript. The bearing and the uh, radiance to degrees functions are going to be the same. I just ported them to, to Java here. So, yeah. And uh, now 
we are going back to the location handler, so here, and I want to tell the marker to rotate. So I'm going to write this code. It's going to say if the marker loca location is different from this new location then we are, that we are calculating, it means that the user has moved. And I want to set the rotation. So this function is missing in the Google Maps JavaScript API. So this is really useful in, in our situation. I want to get the rotation from this super marker object with those uh, small trigonometric uh, functions that, uh, that I wrote here. So they are not too difficult, but they don't, they are not needed for this app. So if you like, uh, if you are happy enough with Superman standing still or making a new type of icon here that doesn't need to rotate, then it's just fine. But if you want to learn how it's done, uh, you can you can check this file. So debugging the, the app once more, in my opinion, this has a very very big effect on, on how the app will uh, will be um, understood. So yeah, let's and how it's going to be, uh, like how to say, uh, viewed viewed by the by the others. So it's still not a very smooth rotation, but it is moving depending on how the on how the trajectory tells it to move. So small update, uh, but I think it's valuable feature. So. Something like this, if you add to your own projects, it counts as a feature, even though it's a few, few lines of code, really. So I wanted to add this already now before, uh, before ending. Uh, I know this is not, not as clear because we are covering these. Uh, if you don't have an Android, then you probably don't know of all these settings, of all these uh, uh, permission requests and uh, operating system uh, settings so it might be confusing like why do you need to do this but it's really the the, the way to do it and if you want to program native Android you need to learn these, uh, these specific specific functions there so it was a bit boring but uh, I think Next week we finish also this one, so the, the plan is next week we get this one as similar to this and we can compare them uh, side by side to see what makes a HTML5 app different from the, from the Android app, the native app. And also next week we will make them even better with some server side API calls or something complicated functions that we don't need to implement ourselves, we just ask other people how to do it. So uh, we call other, other servers for those functionalities. Okay, thanks.